everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here. Thanks for stopping by and watching my video today. Today, I want to share a quick Photoshop trick for setting color balance in your photos. Obviously, we all want our images to have nice, clean colors. In my experience, nothing ruins an image faster than a heavy color cast. You lose good separation of color, it tends to make your photos look flat, they look dimensionless, and they look muddy. Now, before we begin, yes, I know there are about a million different ways to set color balance. And I also know that this little trick won't work for every photo out there. However, it's fast become one of my favorite techniques and I end up using it about 70% of the time on my images, well, at least I have recently. So I thought I'd share it with you. All you need is something, pretty much anything in your photo, that's gonna be detailed white. It can be a cloud, it can be a feather, maybe the top of the way of a wave, uh, white fur, water going over a falls, anything that should appear as white with details in your photo. Again, we're not talking about bright, clipped, detailless white. We're talking about white with some level of detail in it. Basically, we're gonna use a curves adjustment layer to set color only. Now, I know what you're thinking, and no, this is not another YouTube video about how to set white points and black points in your image. This is a little bit different. Stick with me here, and I'm gonna show you this cool little trick. Okay, our first image here is a nice waterfall. Unfortunately, it does have a little bit of a blue color cast. Now, when you first look at it, a lot of people say, oh, I don't really see much of a color cast, but once we correct it, you're definitely gonna know that it's there. So, let me show you this technique. The first thing you need is a curves adjustment layer. So, if you have a newer version of Photoshop, you can add it with this little dialog box. Um, if not, just go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and curves. And it'll uh, give you a little dialogue, just hit okay and just name it, curves one is fine. So basically what you want is this end result right here where you have a curves dialogue box. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna double click this little white eyedropper here. And that's gonna bring up the color picker box. Don't worry about that right this second, but just know that it's there and we're gonna be using it. Now what I wanna do now is I wanna look at this image and I wanna find an area that I kinda of feel like should be a pure white without any color cast to it. Now I'm thinking that this area here should probably look like that to the eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna hold my Command key down or Control key if you're using Windows. And then I'm gonna click my mouse. Now here's the important part, once you click your mouse, don't touch it again until I tell you to. Because if you do, you're gonna move that uh, point and it's gonna mess the whole thing up, so we don't wanna do that, so don't touch your mouse. Um, what we're gonna do is we're worried about the RGB settings, and what we wanna do is we wanna set all of those to the highest value. So we're gonna hit our tab key by our, with our color picker box, and we're just gonna tap through until we get in the RGB area here. Okay, now the highest value between R, G, and B is 237. So we want to change everything so that it's at 237. This is going to neutralize, uh, get rid of all that color cast. So let's just change it to 237 there. Hit tab, 237. And of course, blue is already at 237. And again, we're still not touching our mouse. If we touch our mouse, we mess it up. So don't touch your mouse. Okay, now we're going to hit OK. Well, we're going to hit return or enter, so it'll select OK. Uh, it's going to say, do you want to save the new tire colors as a default? Don't worry about that. Just hit enter. And now we just click our mouse. Again, don't move it. Just click it. And instantly, you can see there's a real, real big difference right here. Now, I also want to set this curves layer. Once I do that, I, I don't want it in normal mode because it actually did brighten the image a little bit. I want to go down here and select color from the blending mode, so that I'm not affecting any of the brightness, I'm only affecting color. I only want to affect color, I will mess with brightness on another layer another time. But for right now, I just want to affect color. And that's basically what we did. And you can see, here's the, first, here's the original one, and you can see it's got kind of a blue color cast to it. And I click it again, and you can see it's much, much warmer. Now for the final image on this particular shot, I went ahead and I blended in some gradients here along both sides to get a little bit of that blue cast back into the leaves so that the uh, waterfall kind of stood out from them. But, uh, you know, obviously you have a layer mask, you can use this effect as much as you want. Sometimes you don't want the whole effect so you knock the opacity down. But in fact, we're gonna take a closer look at that on the next shot. So let's take a look now. Okay, this is our second image, and in this case, the image is actually quite a bit warm. That's, this is just too warm. The white balance was set wrong, and I know a lot of people are gonna look at this and go, oh, it's beautiful sunset, I like a warm looking image. The problem is, is that when you have an image that looks 
the, even if it's warm, cool, whichever way it's going, if it's got a bit of a color cast to it, it ends up looking flat and it, kind of one-dimensional. To get that nice three-dimensional look and to get a nice actual print out of the thing, you really do need to have nice color separation. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to fix this one. So this, again, I'm going to use the goose here because he's nice and white, or he should be white, not, not this uh, kind of brownish color he's got going on right now. So I'm going to put the uh, curves adjustment layer in there. And I'm going to double click the white eyedropper again. And I'm going to find an area on him that I feel like ought to be white. And this area right here probably should appear as white. So I'm going to hit my Command or Windows Control. And again, I'm going to click. So that selects it. Once again, we're not going to touch the mouse. We're just going to use the Tab key. And we're going to look at our RGB values. In this case, 245, 209, and 173. Since 245 is the highest, we want to set them all to 245, and then the next one to 245. Again, we're not touching the mouse. We're hitting the Enter or Return key. We're hitting it again. And now we're going to just go ahead and click our mouse. And just like that, it's made a dramatic change. Unfortunately, I think it went too far this time. I think this maybe needs a little bit of warmth because it was in the evening and it doesn't quite look right now. This kind of makes it look like it was shot in the middle of the day. And it was actually shot uh, about 45 minutes before sunset. So let's uh, go ahead and fix that. And first thing we want to do, again, here's our curves layer. And we have it set to normal. The first thing you want to do before you do anything is set that down to color. You definitely want color mode. You can see it made a huge difference. I'm going to put that back to normal just to show you. See how bright that was? It did brighten it up. And again, we only want to affect color with this change. So I'm going to set, set it back to, uh, to color mode here. And now I'm going to look at it. I'm going to say, you know, it's still a little bit too, I think it's too, too much on the cool side. So I'm going to lower my opacity on my layer and just add some of that warmth back in so it was more like what I saw when I was there. And right about there looks pretty darn good. And it's still a pretty dramatic difference. I'm going to go ahead and show you the, uh, this is the before version of it. And you can see everything kind of blends together. It's very, very muddy. And here's the after. Everything's clean. The colors are nice. And you can see nice color separation between the blues and even the warm, warmer areas on the wings here. So, and I might even say maybe add just a hair bit more warmth, but not too much. I think that uh, I think we have a winner right there. So that's basically the trick. Okay, so that's the idea. Here are a couple of notes though. Number one, I've also tried this with a black eyedropper and used the lowest number instead of the highest as the target value. But it's a bit harder though because you need to find something in your photo that would normally be black with some detail. Now, you can't just pick a shadow area because what's in the actual shadow might be brown, it might be green, who knows what color. It absolutely has to be something that's already detailed black. A black bear is a great example. Number two. Again, I want to stress that this is not the only method I use for setting color balance, and it's not the only method you should use either. I personally have an entire arsenal of really cool techniques that I use. This method just works really well for me when there's something white in the photo. So, you know, give it a try and see what you think. Okay, that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, I'd sure appreciate it if you'd hit that like button below and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, be sure to check out my website and sign up for my email newsletter so you never miss any of these tips. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. in your photos. Obviously, we all want our images to have nice, clean colors. Here's my cat. His name's Tigger, and he's uh, making it really hard to shoot this video. This is number two right here. It's Tigger's butt. Yeah, he's gone. Bye, Tigger. Bye, Tigger. <laughs> Tigger just flew through the air.